All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to part three of the Applied Energistics tutorial series. We are here at the Overboard, and it's time to skip past. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> that's a nice view. Oh goodness. Okay, uh, part three. If you missed part one and part two, that was uh, getting started, and then storage and pipes. Make sure to check those out. Today, what are we going to be doing, Captain? What's part part three, three: mod interfacing and auto crafting. Woo! Some really cool things up on the board here. This is going to be a big one, so we're going to go through this as quickly and effectively as possible. <laughs> we got a lot of items up here. We got an export bus, import bus, level emitter, interface, crafting monitor, blank pattern, crafting terminal pattern, encoder, ME assembler, containment wall, ME heat vent, crafting CPU and an ME pattern provider. All right, so the first item on our list is going to be the ME crafting terminal. So the ME crafting terminal is just basically a, a project table that you get to use all the things that are in your network to build stuff with, and you can just pull stuff out and make whatever you want, make a cobblestone furnace, and the recipe will actually use, if you see, it's detracting stuff from the uh, crafting terminal or from the whole ME network. All right, what we have here is an export bus on top and an import bus on the right. Now, it's really important to understand how these work. The words export and import can be kind of confusing. So the one on top is an export bus, and the reason why it's an export bus is because it's exporting items out of the AE system. So it's removing items from the system. So if you want to take something out, um, in other words, uh, if, if you were to hook up like pneumatic tubes into something and it were to push it into a chest, this is kind of what this does all on its own. And the import bus will take items from a um, storage device or GUI or GUI of something and pull it into the system. So that's an import bus. Really important to note the distinction between the two. And notice that there's a bunch of different modes for each of these. I'm looking right now in the import bus. You can have it be active with signal, active once per pulse, always active, or active without signal. We'll turn it back to active with signal. Then there's a stack mode for the import bus that says, do you want to move a single item at a time, or do you want to move stacks of items at a time? And I accidentally took all of the cobblestone that I had put in there out. So as soon as I turn this import bus, if you watch that crystal chest right there, Boom, sucked it right into the system. And again, it's instantaneous, so anything in the system that needed cobblestone will now have um, immediate access to it. In the export bus, you have the same setup, except it's slightly different with the um, stack mode. You can actually have it either move single items or craft the item that it needs, or always craft. And this is good if you're setting up a si system that you um, want, you're going to force it to make stuff on demand. Okay. And as long as the crafting recipe is in there, it'll know what to do. So we'll turn this back off and import everything back into our system. There we go. Instantaneous. Woo! Major bonuses to this mod. All right, you'll notice also that we have an export bus and an import bus hooked up to an IC2 macerator. It doesn't work with other mod items. We have one hooked up to a Red Power 2 blue electric furnace. Uh, we have it hooked up to a thermal expansion powered furnace, and so on and so forth. All right, let's take a look at how you make these things really quick before we forget. We have the export bus, which is going to require a sticky piston along with some iron and an ME interface. You're going to have a regular piston required for an import bus, same pattern basically. Uh, for the ME interface, uh, you're going to need a conversion matrix, um, some more iron, glass, ME cable. Um, the crafting terminal, which is on the other side. Don't, don't confuse the terminal and the monitor. They are two completely different, different blocks. Uh, that terminal is going to require crafting table, um, one of those thingies from the other mod over there, that storage, storage, cell, storage cell, and access terminal and glass. All right, so that's how you make that stuff. Now, what if you want to auto craft things, um, or let the system auto craft things all by itself? Because we be lazy. Exactly, and these things are awesome. Uh, we have had a huge one of these in our base, and this is just kind of showing you the guts of what's inside of here. Um, the things on the outside wall our ME heat vents. That's those right there. These right here. Um, the wall or the outside perimeter of this box is made up of ME assembler containment wall. That's the little blue circle blocks. And then there's two different kinds of blocks that go inside of this actual block. One is a crafting CPU and one is the ME pattern provider. 
Now the more crafting CPUs you have inside your block, the faster it's going to auto craft. And the more pattern provider blocks that you have inside of here, the more potential auto crafting patterns you can install into this block. Um, each one of these pattern providers is going to give you space to store how many? 54? Yep. 54 different auto crafting blocks. Um, so that's a, that's a ton. I mean, that's a lot if you're just starting out. Yeah. Not as much as you'll need in end game, um, but you can make several of these blocks if you wish. And what we're going to do here is we're going to complete this really quick. Here's your pattern for the uh, containment wall and for the uh, you're using iron bars, ME cable, and iron ingots to craft your heat vent. Your CPU is going to use more quartz, a diamond chipset, and glowstone. This is a new one to the mod so far. Glowstone dust. You have to go to the nether for that or use UU matter. And then all these we've seen before, your diamond chipset, your conversion matrix, your iron ingots, crafting tables. That will get you your pattern provider. All right, so let's finish this block and see what happens. We're going to put these containment walls on the outside. We're going to build the outside perimeter here, and then we're going to put uh, heat vents all along the walls. And then before we can, or before we finish this block, we're going to load it with crafting CPUs because we want it to craft our patterns really fast. You do have to make sure that this is a giant solid block. You can't have any empty spaces in here, so beware of that when you're uh, designing this thing. And as soon as Captain Jack puts that last heat vent in there. You can see that it changes the graphic and shows you that it's now complete. And that's how you know if this thing is ready to go. Now we haven't actually, we've had a massive one. I think it was like 20 or 30 blocks tall. We haven't actually hit the biggest one. The smallest you can build um, by definition is a 3x3x3 three by three by three cube. And that would only let you have um, one pattern provider or one CPU inside. So it's kind of useless. You're going to need to make it bigger. This is a 4x4 four four, and I think it has, if we if you just click the wall you can see what it's got inside it it's only got one pattern provider so we got one out of one pages here this one should have one out of two pages and I believe the rest would then be CPUs inside alright also note that this is hooked into our system by a pipe that's running underground so this is connected to the main controller that we had in part two so this is all part of the system and now it's going to be able to see everything in here and in order to see what's inside of these boxes, you just click anywhere on the box. It doesn't matter which part of the box it is, whether it's a heat vent or a containment wall, it's going to show you what's inside. To see what the patterns are inside, if you hold the shift key, it will actually turn the little pattern icon into what it has um, been configured to create. Now you'll notice that this thing is red. Um, that's because it's a pattern that the system knows it can't automatically create. It's trying to turn sticky resin into rubber. That actually needs to go into a crafting interface, or an ME interface, like one of those guys over there. So the recipe for the pattern that's going to save your life from uh, actually doing all this stuff. Again, we have glowstone again, iron, quartz, and glass on either side. So how do we get a pattern that it can actually support in there? How do we tell it what it can actually craft? So I have here the components for a piston, and we're going to put these into the system. And you notice as soon as you put the recipe in, it says what the output should be. All you need to do is take a blank pattern and put it in there and hit encode. And now it says craft one piston, shows all the materials, and we're good to go. So if we just open this thing back up, click and drop it in there. If we hold shift, we can see that it's crafting a piston. And now if we go to any of these access terminals, oops, that's the wrong one. This is the access terminal. If I try and type piston, it says now that we can craft them. And if we try and pull stuff out, begin there we go it will craft them okay so now we can automatically craft anything that we can put into a normal pattern that is anything that you would normally have done in either a project table like you've seen here or something like an auto crafting table mark 2 auto crafting table um, mark 1 whatever so how do we handle machines that are not actually normal like something like this like the macerator or the electric furnace or even over here we have blue electricity and this thing, the compressor. How do we handle that? And to do that, we're actually going to have to customize um, an ME pattern. And to do that, we need to take, we'll grab our pattern. We have a pattern here. Let's start off by making something like uh, red alloy ingot. In order to do that, you have to say what the recipe will do. So if we say one iron and one, two, three, four redstone are encoded to form one red alloy ingot, we can take a blank pattern, put it in there, encode it, and now this thing is telling 
the system or whatever is going to be using this, and we'll show that in just a minute, it's saying that you can take one iron ingot, four redstone, stick them into whatever machine I tell you to, and after everything is done, you will get one red alloy ingot back. So we're going to take that and we're going to head over to this thing, which is our red power tube blue electric furnace with an ME interface, which we showed you how to craft over here. We'll look at it again just quick. And we're going to take that and just slap it down right on top of this machine. So if we open up this ME interface, there's three main windows here, three main sections of this. We're going to go over the export config and the exported item section in just a minute, but I'm going to show you now what this thing called processing does. So if you remember, we encoded the assembler pattern with one red alloy ingot being produced by one iron ingot and four redstone. If we put it in there, in this processing section, what this is doing is it's telling the interface, if somebody requests via crafting, and we can go over here, if we look in our crafting bench now and type in red alloy ingots, let me just take these ones that it has out, you can see now that this thing is able to craft it. The system now thinks it knows how to craft this. So in order to get it to work, it's going to try and stick one iron ingot and four redstone into whatever machine is connected to it, which just happens to be this red power tube blue electric furnace. Now, it doesn't actually care how the things happen. It doesn't care how this um, bar of iron and redstone will turn into the red alloy ingot. It just needs to know that, hey, if I stick what they tell me to, if I stick that into the machine that I'm connected to or whatever, that somehow the system is going to get that red alloy ingot. So to test this out, we have our pattern in here. If you hold the shift key, it will convert the pattern image into the image of what it's actually crafting. That's going to be really helpful. So let's try and see if we can run fast enough to get this thing uh, to show off what it's doing. So we're going to go back to our main terminal and we're going to craft. Let's say we'll craft two of them or three of them. And then we'll say begin and it's going to put those in the queue. And if we run, see how the little blue lights are going? That means it's, it's already trying to fulfill our order. And we can see there um, that it's now, it's, it looks like it's on the second one. It'll process it, put it in there, and then we have the import bus is going to immediately suck it back into the system. So now if we go back over here and we look for our red alloy ingot, boom, there's the three that we requested. Automatically done without us lifting a finger. So now let's take a look at that export and uh, exported items section of this ME interface. Now what I've done here, I'll just explain this setup very quickly. I just have a sorting machine um, hooked up underneath an ME interface and I just showed a little bit of pipe here so that you can see what's going on and that's going into a mass fabricator. Now this setup is complete overkill because you can pump with an import and export bus. You can interface directly with this mass fabricator, but I'm going to explain to you through this setup how this export config and exported items setup works. Now what's really going on here is this is the configuration setting. If you've ever used a retrievulator, it's basically the same thing. Um, this is a side where you tell the system what you want it to put in this little exported item section, which operates almost exactly like a tiny little um, eight slot chest. So right now I told it, please try and maintain six scrap boxes. And it says, okay, I can do that. I have them in the system. There you go, six scrap boxes. If I were to say, for example, let's take eight and I want it to export eight of these redstone items. It says, okay, I have those in the system and puts them in this little tiny inventory. Now I'm going to take these out because uh, you can. I'm going to show you how this works. As soon as I take it out, it tries to replace them with more from the system, and it will do that until it actually runs out. But we don't want to put redstone in our uh, mass fabricator. We only want to put scrap boxes in there. So I'm going to leave it at six scrap boxes. And remember, this is a little tiny uh, inventory, so the sorting machine can actually access that inventory. And if I just trigger the sorting machine here. We can see that now it's going to pull them out of that little ME interface inventory and it's going really fast. We can't actually see it working and going into the mass fabricator. So that's the export config and exported items. Okay, so next we're going to take a look at this thing called the ME crafting monitor. And here's your recipe, another redstone golden chipset, some ME cable, glass, iron, and you have yourself a monitor. Now I've gone ahead and put a couple different recipes into the system. We're going to be able to make red doped wafers automatically and the uh, recipe for silicon bools and silicon wafers and finally red dope wafer are already all in there put them in there for you we're going to tell it to craft let's say two we'll go ahead and begin that process and if we go up into our crafting monitor we can see its current progress it's saying i need two i'm working on two and we can see one just popped out there because it made um, 
made something I didn't get a chance to see. Oh, it made the silicon bowl. Now it's saying I'm trying to currently craft silicon wafers and a diamond handsaw. Okay, it doesn't really know how to craft a diamond handsaw. It's saying that's missing. Luckily, I have one of those in my inventory. So if we take that and enter it into the system, now it has a diamond handsaw, and you can see it crafted those almost immediately. Now what it's going to do, you can see, oh, it's taken out. If I run really fast, we can try and catch it. There we go. We saw that it just fulfilled the order. It put um, the recipe for the red doped wafer is actually now in here. So there's your silicon bowl, eight sand, eight coal. Your silicon wafer is one silicon wafer, or your red doped wafer, I'm sorry, is one silicon wafer and four redstone. The whole system now knows how to do all that. And so without, again, without lifting a finger, we just processed three different recipes to produce some red doped wafers. Very cool. Next, we're going to take a look at this thing called the ME level emitter. And to, you, to make that, you're actually going to use a redstone torch, golden chipset, more ME cable, and your favorite iron. That makes this thing called a level emitter. Now, this thing is rotatable with either the Omni wrench or the quartz wrench, as Captain Jack is doing for us so kindly right there. And what this thing lets you do is it lets you monitor levels in your entire network. So you can put this thing anywhere, and it will know everything that's in your network. I put a piece of cobblestone in there, and I told it to watch for 512. And then I said to redstone mode, it's going to emit when levels are above limit. So anytime there's more cobblestone in the system than 512 cobblestone, it will actually trigger the system. Now this thing is useful when it's connected to something like this export bus. This export bus is to show it has cobblestone in there. It's going to move them at a stack at a time. And only when it has a signal. This level emitter is going to provide that signal. It's like a little baby redstone torch. <laughs> <laughs> so we can see here that there's more than 512 um, cobblestone in there so this emitter is red it's on and it's slowly putting um, our cobblestone into our recycler then the recycler is hooked up to an import bus which is pumping scrap back into the system we can see that here it's converting cobblestone back into scrap through the use of the recycler all right, so the next thing we're going to look at is this thing called the wireless access terminal. Woo, best invention ever. Oh, yeah, because you don't want to keep having to run back to uh, your network, your crafting terminals all the time. So this thing uses a wireless receiver and an access terminal. You craft the wireless receiver like this, an ender pearl, some quartz fiber, and some um, ingot, iron ingots. And that lets you create one of these things called a ME wireless access terminal. Now, you notice as soon as you make it, it says that it's unlinked. So how do we link it? We go back over here to part two, watch the part controller. two, and take this thing and stick it in the controller. Now, immediately we'll say that it's linked, and now the cool part is we can just go, oh, we're out of range, so we'll deal with that in a second. Here we go, we're out of range, we're getting into this range, and this thing is called the wireless access point. Now, you need this in order to actually access your terminal remotely. You craft that, again, with your wireless receiver, more ME cable, iron, glass, yada, yada, yada. Um, what that thing lets you do is you can have, I believe, what's the default range? 16 blocks? 16 blocks, yep. Something like that. And uh, anywhere you are, see, I'll get to F5 so you know that I'm not cheating. Um, if you just right-click, boom, you have access to your entire terminal, including things that you need to craft, if you needed to craft some pistons, um, in the middle of your mines, whatever. So how do we expand that range? Because I lost it way back here. Well, if you look inside this thing, you're going to note that there's one single little slot that you can place something. Ooh. And you're going to want to place wireless boosters in there. Now, you can place up to 16 wireless boosters in there, and they're going to increase the wireless radius of your wireless access terminal by one block per wireless booster. Now, you can dump oh, as many. Yeah. You can dump up to a stack inside there, but it's not going to do anything past 16. I guess it's a limitation of the mod. Um, which is fine. You, um, you can create range. a network of these and run it underground all throughout your entire network or your entire base so that you can access anything in your system remotely at any time, which is double awesome on top of whatever else ever happened. So the last thing we have to look at here are these things called entropy accelerators and vibration catalysts. Um, there's a couple other things in here, advanced processor assemblies, basic stuff. These aren't used yet, and it looks like they are going to be a replacement for the uh, Buildcraft assembly table stuff. Oh, that would be so nice. I know. I hate those, those things. Are, they're really horrible. Um, and Come join me in my hot tub. Ooh, you has a hot tub. Mm -hmm. 
what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> Secret things. Secret things. Okay, so how do we use these? Uh, what do I have? The entropy accelerator. The entropy accelerator. That will work on water and probably other things too. It's going to turn water into ice. Um, I think it should turn lava into cobblestone. Something like that. That's probably true. Do you have any lava we can play with? No, nope. um, I don't. Um, and the vibration catalyst will change this. It's like an it's like an auto smelter. You can smelt things on command. So if there was yeah, if there was uh, cobblestone around here somewhere, which maybe I can dig down to some. It'll also work if there's uh man, you're really going way down there. No, this is stone. It's already into stone. So if we have iron here, watch this. Why don't you vibrate that thing? Whoa. Oh, yeah. I got an ingot. Got an ingot right out of there. That's kind of cool. I'm so happy I spit on my ingot. All right, well, this has been part three of Applied Energistics. Uh, what we've basically gone through in this, if it hasn't been clear already, is that you can autocraft just about anything in the game. Actually, you can autocraft anything in the game, I think. Yeah, we haven't had anything we couldn't do yet. Um, you can put the patterns all inside your big crafting block here, and the more patterns you have, uh, the more, patterns, more, more fun. <laughs> the easier life is going to be. Mm -hmm. So you can load these blocks with patterns. Um, you just have to configure all of your machines with proper import and export bus um, usage, I guess. Yep. And uh, you can access your entire system remotely, which this has been a game changer for us. We love this mod, and we can't wait to see what else is coming out. This has been Part 3. Guys, thanks for watching, and stay poised.